Hey, where did you come from? That's the missing 470 m resistor. I'll have you know. It snuck away. Flipping thing. Not to worry. It would have turned up, to be fair. Attack switches. Dick. So we've, we've now got a lot. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 capacitors. The point ones. Our point ones are normally marked 104. So here's our capacitors. Not you, you're a transistor. I do not have a capacitance measuring meter. It measures logic levels, but then it cost about £10. So here we go. I don't know if you can see that one. That says 104. Does this help? Yeah, probably not. I think that's just confusing the camera. It does say 104 on it. So if we get the 104s out first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll give you a clue, these are the larger ones. 10, 11, that's how I'm spotting them. Okay, and then these are the other values, so not worry about those for now. And these are going in C1. And again, the boards are normally numbered from one corner across. So, good man. Whoever, or lady, we do not know. They started in the top left hand corner on the salt screen. And then it's C9, 10, 11. So 10 and 11. Don't need to bend the lead, the leads out very far. Even just a little bit more than they were, and it'll it'll stay in. It won't go anywhere. That's C one. And these are ten and eleven. And we'll go back for nine. Maybe your solder looks a bit dull and grey, just, just redo it for a second. Dry joints can happen one of two ways. One, one is when the solder crystallises when you put it on, and the other one, one is on, on circuits, particularly things like regulators, where it's heating up and cooling down every time you use it, and they will eventually go dry jointed. Not always. But that's where you're likely to find them. So if you have a circuit that's not working and you wonder why, th that's one place to start. Uh, that and bulging electrolytic capacitors where the, the top has got, where it's got this top. Th this has an X on it for a reason. It's a deliberate weak point so that if it ever decides to fail and the gases in, inside are trying to escape faster than they can, there's a little vent hole underneath. But if, it, if the gases are trying to escape faster than they can through that vent hole, the top it will give way 
it will get really hot and it will actually blow that clean out under extreme circumstances. Anybody who's ever connected a an electrolytic capacitor up the wrong way will know that. They're quite vicious. They used to put a plastic cap over, over the end and I have actually been hit with the plastic cap and that's not pleasant. C9, where are you? There. Oh, saw it and then lost it. There it is. Again, these are ceramic capacitors. It matters not a jot which way, where you put them in. What you should do, however, is mount them fairly tightly to the circuit board. If you leave the leads long, it will introduce inductance and that will de decrease the effect of the capacitor. So we've done 1, 9, 10, 11, we now need 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. And a few others, but basically those. There are some holes on this board that don't hold any components. They're probably used for testing purposes. I've found a few of these but not all of them. Alright, I'll put in the ones I have found. So 14 and 16. Seventeen, eighteen, twenty, and twenty three. There's twenty.
it's good to have uh, a flow from one side of the board to the other because it makes it easy it makes it less easy to miss things like that, I just missed that completely and that's a bit lame And there's the one that we forgot. I think we're well past the halfway mark component wise now. And I'm about an hour into doing this in real time. You'll be seeing it edited obviously. Right, so the next one. C2 is 320 picofarads. Could be that one. That's 331, so I imagine that's 330 picofarads. There's a 33. There's a 121, which is 120. There's a 22. Two 22s. So those are the two 22s. That's a 1, which is a 1 peak of added. I'm checking it against the list, that's how I know. That's a 3. Hmm, that could be surplus. That's a one two one, which is interesting because there aren't that many of them. And that's a one oh four. So it appears to be a surface one oh four. As with the the digital alarm thing, they do tend to chuck surplus components all over the place rather than give you not enough. Obviously, when you pay people low wages to pick and pack stuff, they should. As long as the customer isn't short, they're not going to complain. Or should I say, as long as the customer isn't short of their capacitors. So, C2. And again, could it be up this end? Yep. Found it and then lost it again. I was also distracted by a hole that I've managed to fill in. C3 is a 3PF, that's the hole that's blocked. That's a 3. And that one is a hole I've blocked. Eventually it'll go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a little bit proud, but that's what it. Oh, look at that big blob of solder that's fell out the other side. How did that happen? Okay, clean up on aisle three, as they say. 
I mean, you may only be planning to put components into a board, but you always need some desoldering braid to get you out of a mess. There we go. Happy with that. Sometimes you can remove solder by putting more on because the flux has the action. Here's another big blob. The flux has the action of loosening everything up. And that's why you shouldn't do that. Be reckless at your own risk. Okay. Very bad habit clumping all this stuff together. So what we've done, we've done C1 to 9, we've done the 330, we've done the 3, we've done the C5, 1 Pico. Memorised where it was before. 7 and 8, 120, which is a 121. You can see the hole, I just carry out the wire in it. And C8. So capacitors have multiple uh, purposes from storing electricity, which is what their primary function is, which all capacitors do, to making timing components for oscillators and tuning different frequencies in or out. And providing a load for things like crystals and electrolytics are only ever really used for smoothing power supplies and and uh, providing a long time in delay ceramics and other types of capacitors and for generally for decoupling uh, and causing speci very specific timing on oscillators We are getting there. So 12 and 13 are 22 PS. And they are indeed for tuning the crystal. Not tuning so much as loading. So these are probably to compensate. For the internal load, 
that the chip is going to give the crystal and these will balance it out. So they're not really tuning the frequency, they're providing the perfect load so that the frequency is not affected. You can tune a crystal very slightly by changing the capacitance around it, but I suspect that these are for loading purposes. Sorry, I'll show you where they are. So there's the crystal, and one leg at either end connects to the crystals down to ground, and then the other end goes into that chip, which is the processing chip, signal processing chip. So that's that. We've now got an LED. called D3 and it goes down here and the positive leg is the square and I'm checking and the, the instructions agree so the longer lead is positive the square pad is positive and there's a flat on the casing of the LED so it's completely ambiguous that sat down very low. And if you want to test whether an LED is in the right way round or not, all you have to do is get your meter put your meter on the own on the diode test range. And because it's in a circuit, it's not going to do it. The other way you can tell is that the larger electrode comes up and is massive, and that's always negative. But it's a 3mm LED, so it's not so easy to see. Okay. This is the header if you wish to connect a power lead to it. J9. May as well have it fitted. And if you haven't got a big barrel jack handy, are you powering it internally from something? Transistors, and there's two different ones. Hang on. Oh, that's later. Big dummy. So we have four things that look like transistors, but they're not all transistors. There's two transistors. That is a 9014, so that's Q2. That's a 7.9. That's a 7.9L05. Which Q3? Or U U4? They've called it. That's an 8550, so that's Q1, and this should be the 7805. So it's Q1, Q2, U4, and U5. And that is a 78L05. Right. So we need to gently appease the wires out into a triangle. And this is Q1, so Q1 is up here and it's a PMP transistor and I'll take their word for it. Actually, I won't take their word for it. So knowing that the base is in the middle and the base is negative in inverted commas. I don't know if you can see this or not. So that passes and that should pass. Ooh. 